Prologue. Without a word, Nicole walked slowly down the gangway to Ogashima in Tokyo Bay. I'm home, she thought. She ignored the controlled chaos all about her as the Singapore-registered bulk freighter unloaded its cargo of gypsum from Mexico-occupied San Diego, timber from Vancouver, Canada, and oil from Valdez, Alaska. She drew the usual compliment of stares from the dock workers. Seeing a passenger on a bulk ship was rare, but the passenger was a young woman with red blonde hair and light skin was unheard of. Making her way to the dilapidated but recently repaired office building, she let herself in. More stares from the men behind the desks. Yes, miss, one of them managed. I need a taxi, please, she said in her Kansai dialect. I need to be at Chiyoda, soonest. At the mention of the location of the Imperial Palace, no one moved. The man who had spoken glanced over his right shoulder. Ito, on it, sir, the other man called, reaching for a phone. Not a place frequented by cabs, she waited twenty minutes before its arrival. Without a word to the men in the office, she left and got in the back of the small car. Hello, Chiyota Park, was it, miss? The driver cheerfully asked. Yes, the Imperial Household Agency. Main entrance, please. Wondering if his fare was either a VIP, the driver struggled to maintain his cheer. Of course, miss, please sit back and relax. They moved off to the northeast, passing through the tunnels and onto bridges of Metro Express Bayshore Route before turning north toward the city. The city. She saw the fires in her memory. Just two kilometers before her destination, she looked left at the spire, Togame Tower, its thin form 1,000 meters high, capped with the massive crystalline light held aloft by an EM thruster. I wonder if in my absence someone figured out how those work. Miss, the driver asked, pulling in front of the IH agency. Thank you she said, getting out on the right and taking a couple of steps to the driver's open window. Nicole felt in the handbag over her shoulder, her only luggage. Here. The driver was surprised to feel something cold and heavy pressed into his palm. A coin? An ounce of pure silver, minted in the U.S. over a hundred years ago. She looked over the taxi at the agency building. I don't need it anymore. But th thank you, miss. She paused only a moment before passing through the middle of the three doors. Nicole approached the older man in a dark gray suit behind the counter. He watched her steady approach. Frayed hair, torn skirt, dirty blouse. There was something odd about her green eyes. Just as a precaution, he moved his left hand to hover over the security button. He gambled on her language. May I help you, miss? he asked in good English. Yes, please she replied before returning to Japanese. I must see Her Imperial Majesty. He pressed the button. Aware that something had changed about her, Nicole spoke quickly and clearly. I am Nicole Five Clark. She noted the arrival of four armed men from a door just to her left. My Imperial passcode is... She rattled off what Togame had told her to say whenever Nicole had returned to see her. The armed men split, two behind her left and two behind her right, just out of reach or human. Surprised at what sounded like a legitimate code, he read it back to her, making one correction before tapping enter on his computer. It's real? He breathed in astonishment. Who is this girl? Pushing that aside, he read the orders associated with the passcode. Will you allow me, miss, a moment to summon an escort for you? Of course. She saw him look over her shoulders. The guards drew off. A slightly younger man in the same color suit escorted her out the back of the building and along a gravel path northwest through the woods in the direction of the palace. He drew to a stop just before it. Her Majesty has prior appointments for some time. It will be at least five hours before she can attend to you. There is a small office inside where you may wait. I'd rather not. Offices were places of politics and occasional explosions for her. She pointed to a shaded bench. If you've no objections. I will wait there. Please retrieve me and take me to, to, to Her Majesty when it is her pleasure. That will be fine, he replied. She noted the flick of his eyes as he moved off. Sitting, she followed where he had looked. Ah, a security camera, trained directly at me. Of course. 
She grew still except for the fake rising and falling of her chest, simulating breathing. Once more, after a hundred times already, she tried to think of how she could have done it all better. Once more, she could not. There was a light touch onto her right shoulder. It was nearly dusk. Again she cursed and thanked the somi coder who made the fake sleep routine for whenever she overtasked her processors. Nicole looked up and right, standing and bowing in the blur. I thought we were friends and past all that, the Empress Togame said, taking Nicole's hands and lifting her up. My apologies, my imp uh Togame chan. I I've You look awful, Nicole, Togame said with some concern. What happened? Nicole blinked rapidly. I failed. She watched the Empress's head fall a little, then she felt herself being pulled down onto the bench. Togame's hands never left hers. Tell me, the Empress implored, her eyes coming back up to Nicole's. Tell me what happened. 